it's been about eight months since I last done a beer ranking video. So this is well overdue. I'm going to be ranking 10 mainstream British pale ales. Bring on the beers. And here we are with the beers all lined up. As usual, um, my missus has poured these and blinded them from me, so I don't know which is which. I'm going to blind taste test them, obviously, um, rank them. So I've got my ranking cards over here. And I'm gonna also take a guess, a stab in the dark, we should say, as to what beer it may be. Uh, general uh, ratio is I don't get many right. I'm lucky if I get two. Um, but I always find it's a bit difficult when you're doing the tasting, especially this many back to back. I do have water just to the side as well to cleanse the palate. But yeah, it's always much harder than you think it would be. Right, let's get started with A. Um, I'm just having a quick look through. There are some lighter color ones, some darker color ones, but English pale ales vary in color. Um, I'm calling it English pale ale. I know I originally said. British, but I think they're all from England, these. Right, beer number one. Let's have a go. That has a lovely fruity nose on it. Wow, that is that is a lovely fruity nose. Some good hops on that. Let's have a taste. Oh, I really like that one. That is really good. What a beer to start with. Wow. What is that fruity and that smooth? Right, I, I, I'm going to give this one a three, but I feel I may change my rating, obviously, as I go through. But that is very high for me. And I'm going to go for the moment and guess that A, maybe Tribute. Um, it's smooth. It's zesty, fruity. That's good. Um, it could be one of the other ones as well. Um, I may change mine as I go through, as I said. All right, on to B. All right, this one's malty. So this is malty in the nose. Let's go for a taste. That has a lot of biscuity flavors and it's uh, a higher bitterness level than that one. This one doesn't have, uh, that one didn't have much bitterness, this does. Right, for me, I'm gonna say that's more traditional. Um, it feels light and thin. I'm gonna guess that it may be EPA. That's what I'm going with just because of its flavor and lightness. Um, overall, nothing offensive about it, um, but nothing major about it either. So I'm gonna give it a six. Placing it in sixth, but let's see. Right, on to C. Okay, the nose has a light hop flavor, but not much on anything else. That's a very light hop flavor. Taste wise. It has 
a nice floral flavor to it. Uh, that's very nice from the hop and a bit of hop bitterness. I'm already feeling that this is going to move down much lower. That is really nice. Um, uh, I'm going to give this a four. So number four for it, but I, I think I really want to put St. Austell's there now. Um, I'm going to go with Hopping Hair from Badger, but I think I may switch these two around on my guesses. Right, on to D. So D. Again, this is more on the malt. So this is a bit like B. It's more on a malt nose, on the flavour. Oh, wow, that is... I wonder if I'm not doing it justice. I'm going to cleanse my palate quickly. Oh dear. <laughs> that doesn't really have much flavour. That really doesn't have much flavour at all. It's just very plain. For that reason, I'm guessing it's that. Um, and I'm putting it in number nine for the moment. Number nine. And uh, I'm trying to think what B could be. B is a bit malty. I'm going to guess that B is Whitstable Bay. Um, I'm going to go with that for the moment. So on to E. Again, a more malty nose on it. There is a nice hotness to it that brings through a bit of fruit. I like that. I'm going to take the six away from B and put it onto E. And I'm going to give a seven. Actually, change my mind. So I'm going to give B a seven and I'm going to give E a five. So five for E. I've still got my highs and lows here at this stage and a medium. So we're halfway through. There have been, I would say, none of them have been offensive so far. Um, just that, yeah, they're not. I just realized I didn't guess what that one was. I'm guessing Ghost Ship. I'm guessing E is Ghost Ship. Nothing's been offensive so far. Um, just flavor wise, um, I think that D is lacking in flavor, really. Right, on to F. This is very malty, yeah, a lot of malt. But, ooh, also a bit of a skunk smell. Mmm, I'm taking that and putting that there. And I mean, is no flavor better than a skunk flavor? Yeah, that is right. You're getting number nine and number eight now is going towards uh, E here. I've, <sighs> glass beers tend to get skunked and um, I've just got too much of a history with Shepherd Nee when their glass bottles always being sort of skunked. Um, tends to happen more to theirs than others. It's malty, but it's skunked. I might even put that as 10 in a moment. <laughs> right, G time. Or oh, G hit the spot, let's see. Oh, all right. So straight away, I know what that is. Um, I was gonna say, a, a lot of toffee flavors. I could smell some on the nose, but on flavor, that is toffee. Yeah, um, I'm not a huge fan, um, I'll say this straight up. 
I think this is Old Speckled Hen, which is made by Green King. They have a yeast that just gives off that sort of toffee flavors. I'm not always a huge fan of that. Um, I mean, there's nothing that offensive by it, but yeah, all their beers have that sort of toffee flavor to it. Um, for me, it's better than um, the Skunky, but I don't think it's better than this, which is clean and easy as a pale ale, whereas this is a bit thicker and harder to get through. I would have been interested to try this before Green King bought out Moorland, whether they actually brewed it different or whether it was the same toffiness as well. All right, on to H. I'm fairly certain I got that one right. That's why I'm, I'm talking that way, but I'll probably be proven wrong at the end. All right, on to H. Right, this is going back the opposite way. This is moving us towards um, a more floral fruity flavor. Let's have a quick clear of the mouth. Cleansing time. I've changed B so many times now, I'm gonna wait uh, uh, till the end. Um, otherwise I'll just keep dragging off there. Zesty, very nice. Oh, this is so, oh, wow. I now think, oh, I now think this is tribute. Oh dear, what am I doing? Um, What have I got? I am gonna guess Bass is B. I'm gonna guess that Atlantic. Is it smooth enough to be Atlantic? I'm gonna guess Atlantic, because um, that is a slightly fruity one, I would say. I like it, but I do think six is about right for its position at the moment, so I'll put it in sixth place. Um, we're on to the final two, so penultimate, I. Again, this is going down the fruit line. Yep. Um, a big hit of citrus on there. I do like that. I don't think it's number one, and I've only got one and two left. Um, I'm going to grab A. I'm going to put A as one for the time being, and then I'm going to put uh, D as two, and that gives me three to give this one. And then we're on to J. What could that be? Um, I'm going to guess it's Mad Goose. Um, I haven't had Mad Goose in a while, but I'm going to guess it's Mad Goose because um, I think they're on the more hoppy side. Just thinking of it, I think... See, this is a bit easier than doing lagers, mainly because um, some are more malty, some are more fruity. So there's a sort of side of where it can fall. And then there's just toffee. The green king over here right on to jay okay this is malt forward definitely malt forward okay there's a i'm gonna cleanse my palate again quickly there's a slight fruitiness i think to it but i just want to make sure it's not the uh, one before i'm still tasting there Yeah, there's a slight fruitiness to it. It's nice. I'm going to put in four. And I'm going to guess it's the last remaining one, Landlord. Um, but that may change. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, rearrange these, and then we'll taste them back down line again, move them around. See you in a second. And here we are, all lined up in the order that I've originally just put them as 10 to 1. I'm going to work away from 10 to 1. So number 10, I've said... It's Whistable Bay, Glass Bottle, Skunky. There is a, I said, a, a sort of maltiness to it. But as soon as you taste it, the malt is there, but the skunk sort of comes in. Um, skunk means sunlight has struck through the bottle. All of these ones here, as you can see, are dark bottles, which stop 
the sunlight ruin and hops inside. That is, um, yeah, not nice. Uh, in the pub, probably better. Right, number nine I've said is Old Speckled Hen. Toffee. Toffee. That's that's all I'm really going to say about that one. Toffee. I am going to take a drink quickly to clear this toffee out of my mouth. Because number eight for me didn't have much flavour. Um, and that's why I'm going for it's the EPA because EPA is the lowest ABV one here. But it really doesn't have much flavour. There's a slight malt, maltiness to it. It's easy drinking. It's not offensive at all, actually. That is, I could easily drink the whole bottle of that. But I'm thinking all these taste better, um, but we'll find out. So number seven I've said could be bass. This is malty. I don't think that's bass. So B was the one, this is B, isn't it? Yeah, B was the one I was struggling with. Do you know what? I think B is landlord. Um, I don't know what it is. It's just come through more on the flavor. And I've changed B so many times. I've changed it again, but I think that's landlord uh, on the nose. Now I do like landlord, but I'm currently putting it in seventh place. This is where I can't let my bias of what I think a beer is. This is what happens. I, I sort of sometimes put that in first place, second place, and I go, oh, because I like Trippie, I like that. Um, but yeah, I think that is Landlord, right? Atlantic from Sharps. Okay. It's zesty. It's fruity, but is it better than this? <sighs> right, I think I would have uh, B over H at this stage. It is zesty. Nice fruitiness to it, but I think the malt on this is slightly easier and better um, for drinking. Yeah. All right. On to E, number five, I've ranked it and I've said it's Adnams. Go ship. That's quite smooth. Uh, there's a fruitiness to it. I think it's better than six, uh, which I've said B landlord. So now to four, I will take a quick mouth cleanser again. Right, number four, I've said it could be bass. Is four better than five? That's four. I think that I'm going to switch them as well. I think um, this is coming up to fourth place. Right, we're on to the final three. I've said um, that I is potentially Mad Goose. I haven't had Mad Goose in ages. I don't know whether that is actually Mad Goose. I'm really wanting to sort of move like Adnams um, or Atlantic up there. So go ship or Atlantic, but part of me says, I think that's go ship. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep it as it is. That is better than that. But I think that may be ghost shit, but I'm going to keep it as Mad Goose. Right, number two. 
which was C. I would say it could be Badger. Hop in here. That's really nice. That is better than three, straight up. And then number one. That just, that smells nice and it tastes really nice. A, um, A, number one, deserved, whatever that is. That's really nice. Top, top four, one, two, three, four. Oh, absolutely hard to sort of distinguish between in rating. Um, I do think one, the, the one that I've given one to has a smoother feel, maybe water quality wise. Um, but it's not surprising to me. I've given one, two, three, and four to the more hoppy ones, uh, malt in the middle, and then these two, <laughs> which toffee and yeah, skunt. Right, time for the uh, reveal and to see how many I got right. I'm hoping them to at least. All right, it's time for the reveal. Um, I am. I normally hold off the suspense and uh, leave 10 and 1 to the end, but I don't think I'm going to do that this time. I think I'm going to reveal what 10 and 9 are. So in 10th place, I've said F is uh, Whitstable Bay Pale Ale, and it is Whitstable Bay Pale. Wow, okay. One out of one. That does happen quite often. I get one out of one, and then it turns out one out of 10 at the end. Right, number nine, I've said that um, G is Old Speckled Hen, and I've put it in ninth place, and it is Old Speckled Hen. So, yeah, that doesn't surprise me, those two. Um, that was a bit skunky. That one was a bit toffee. Right, in eighth place, I've said D is I ranked D8, um, but I think it may be EPA. I'm about to find out. D is Hopping Hair. Wow. Did I get that one wrong? I thought Hopping Hair was up here. Um, actually, quite like Hopping Hair, I thought. Uh, but um, yeah, not much to it. Quite, yeah, bland. Um, all right. Seven. In seventh place, I said is H, which I've identified as potentially being Atlantic. And H is actually Tribute. Wow. Okay. So I've got them two wrong. Definitely. I've, I've, I'm, I think it's going downhill from here. Right. In sixth place, I've said B potentially is Landlord. And I've said whatever this is, it's sixth. So B is actually... Landlord. Oh, I got that one right. And I remember part way through, this was, um, B was the one that I kept putting stuff on, but then I, on the second taste, I was like, yeah, I think that's Landlord actually, because of the maltiness on it. All right, in fifth place, I've said potentially this is Bass. So I've said J could be Bass. In fifth place, I've said Bass correctly. I think this may be my best ever. I've got four, <laughs> four out of six so far. And I know I've not got them, um, so there is a potential. Oh, don't think so, but um, I think that's it, four for me. All right, in fourth place, I've given E. So E, what is it? E is Atlantic Pale. Okay. Right, in third place, I've said it potentially could be Mad Goose. This is the last one I could get right, if that's the case. I... Inferred is EPA. That, I know I still had it Wayne's Cup at that stage, but that is a bit of a shock for me. Bloody hell. All right, EPA from Marston's Inferred. In second place, I know I've got both of these wrong, so I've only got four out of ten, but um, we have Mad Goose and Adnams remaining at this stage. Um, so in second place, it is Mad Goose, meaning that Adnams with Ghost Ship is number one. 
Wow. Um, I know it's a big selling beer and I know I've had it and it's okay, but I, yeah, I didn't think that would be number one. Right, let's get this all rearranged correctly and have some thoughts. Well, there's the final standings. Um, yeah, bit of a turn up for me. I will just go through and have a quick little taste through just some thoughts afterwards. I'm not going to touch 10 and 9. I'm not interested. They're not that great. Now, Hopping Hair, funnily enough, it's the one I think I drank the most out of. Um, I put it in eighth because there wasn't much to it. <laughs> There's not much on the nose or on the flavour. Inoffensive, I think, uh, would be the term to use. But yeah, that's not so great. Tribute, number seven. Wow. I, I thought it was uh, more hoppy, actually, Tribute. But this is more bitterness. There's malt, there's bitterness. I'm misremembering what Tribute is, although I'm not sure what the difference is between the bottle and the cast version. Landlord, I guess right is number six. I do like Landlord. Very decent beer. Um, it's malty. Yeah, that's Landlord. There's a slight hop level on that, actually, on the back end. But yeah, I like Landlord, but I've put it as sixth place. Bass, now, that's an interesting one. I've had it a few times, but I just never really remember it. It's a non-memorable beer for me at this stage. Um, I know it's the oldest beer on here, but officially I think it was only relaunched in bottle in like four years ago or something. Yeah. I, I, I stand by my rankings at this stage. I'm not changing anything. I actually do think this is better than that. I'm, I'm standing by my blind ratings on these. Um, Atlantic Pale. I normally only have seen this on keg. I don't see it on cask. Unlike the rest, which I've seen on cask, this is normally keg. And I just wonder whether the bottle version is you get more fruits off it. it it's because it's not um force carbonated like the keg version it's just softer and more rounded i have to find that in the cask that is really nice number three epa the shocker for me the big shopper shocker for me epa because this is i think probably the cheapest one on here um when you go to a supermarket um you will tend to find you've got your four for free offers or whatever it may be now um i think they will move four for free but um epa is not included in that because epa is normally about a pound a pound ten so it's not included because it's actually cheaper than if you took the offer and um I've got no bad blood for Marston's. I do like quite a few of the Marston's beers that I've got. I just don't remember it being that good. So EPA. I mean, it's light, hoppy. I should have realised probably mouthfeel was a bit lighter, but at 3.6%, it's the lowest ABV one here, cheapest price. That is a proper like weekday session beer if you want it. That that's the shock for me. Right, Purity's Mad Goose. Um, not had it in a while, but I see it on cast quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. It's. <clears throat> I just didn't think it was Mad Goose. Um. Yeah, it's making me rethink some life choices. No, it's not. Um, that is really good. Yeah, that is really good. It's smooth. Yeah, I like it. I, just, I do really like it. I just don't know if it's the same on cask as it is in bottle. 
but I'm going to have to hunt that out next time I see it. Well, hunt it out? I mean, next time I'm in a pub and see it, I've got to try it. And then, <clears throat> the big one, number one, ghost ship. Well, I know it's one of the biggest sellers on here. Tribute, ghost ship, landlord, they're the big three, I would say, out of these. And it's one by a mile compared to the other ones. Um, that has a beautiful hop flavour. Mm. Hop nose and hop flavour. Ghost ship wins. Um, can't say I'm surprised. It is a really good beer. Um, I just walked... Well, I thought that maybe something down south might win at that stage. Well, them too, but they've uh, they've come towards the bottom. Um, I feel like I'm rambling now, uh, but I think four out of ten is probably equaling, if not my best result ever. So I think maybe taking eight months off doing this has worked in my favour. Um, you know mastering that palette, getting it all ready for this one test. Yeah, I guess I'll see you in eight months again. Take care.